Well, they say from every disaster, there comes an opportunity to learn. So this is my, I call it my YouTube plant. <laughs> I use it for decoration on my desk, which you would have seen from my previous videos. Now I did manage to salvage the parts. I did tape it up, but I don't think it is quite camera ready because I thought to myself, Hey, this is a great opportunity to test out my 3d modeling and 3d printing skills. And I'll take you guys along for the ride. We're going to be taking the measurements from this original planter here. We're going to be coming up with a new concept for a new planter. And then we're going to print this new concept. And then we're going to transfer from the old planter to the new planter. Out of every disaster comes an opportunity to learn, right? So over the last couple of weeks, I've been actually working on this project, going from concept to 3D modeling to 3D printing. And we're going to go through all of the steps that I did to create this very interesting looking replacement for my YouTube planter, right? Now, if I look on the original planter here, it is pretty straightforward in terms of a planter design, nothing too special, right? And if I take this newer one here, you can see where I use the opportunity to make it interesting, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to be analyzing this planter. We're going to be taking the measurements translating that into a 3d scene and then we're going to come up with a interesting concept and we're going to model it using the same dimensions from the original planter now, if you take a look at it here you can see that the openings are pretty much the same size but this one is a little bit larger right maybe the design got a, got away from me a little bit but i did want it to look crazy so if it does look crazy, then mission accomplished. Now, when we are doing 3D printing, we can break the process down into, I would say about four steps. Step one is to create your concept for the thing that you want to print. Step two is to create the model, right? Step three is to prepare the model for printing. And step four is to print and assemble the model. Now, step one and two, you can pretty much skip if you already have a model, right? There are many places that you can go to download models that are already created for you and just have them printed. Now, step two and three, are the most important parts, right? Which is we need to prepare the 3D model for printing and we actually need to print it. Now, preparing the 3D model can be easy or time consuming depending on the complexity of the model, right? So let's take this for example. Now, this is actually a close up of a wall section, right? And it is created out of a single part. So this was printed as one solid print. Now this requires little preparation because well, it's just a single part. This on the other hand, you can see that it's made up of different parts. You can see that the parts are different colors. Then some parts are simple and some are complex. They have curves and grooves. So depending on the complexity of the model, the preparation time may take a while, right? And this is true whether you are printing something as simple as a vase or something as complex as, let's say, an architectural model, right? So I would say that what we're doing today is printing something that is maybe closer to the complex side of things. So 
whatever lessons we learn here, we can pretty much apply it to a complex model that we decide to print. Now, another thing that we're going to be looking on is some misconceptions of 3D printing. Maybe by far the biggest conception is that you can just press Ctrl P. For those of you who don't know, that's the shortcut to print. Hold Ctrl and press P for print, like you're printing a sheet of paper. And that is not exactly th true with 3D printing, right? There is a preparation process. The second misconception is that you need to own a 3D printer in order to prepare your models for printing, but this is not true. As a matter of fact, you can have your model and have it completely prepared for printing, even without a 3D printer. And then you can just email that prepared model to someone with a 3D printer and they can just print it. Now that we're going to also look on how do we prepare a 3D model, even if we don't have a 3D printer on hand. To do this, we're going to take a deep dive into what we call a slicer. A slicer is a type of software that is used to prepare the model for printing. For this print that we have done, it is done using a Bamboo P1S 3D printer. And I like to describe that brand as, I would say, the Tesla of printers. If you're into cars, it's not the Lamborghini of 3D printers, but at the same time, it is, I would say, a step above your Toyota Corolla of 3D printers, if you understand what I mean. So it's somewhere in the above average range of 3D printers. Now in total, this model took about, I would say about four days if I put all the days together to complete, right? Of course, for me, that was spread out over a couple of weeks. And I would say it took about two days of printing in total, this took about 14 hours to print for the different parts and maybe it took maybe like an hour to assemble. So this is why in total I said it took about four days if I should put all the time together of how long this took. Now in terms of materials, this planter was printed using a material called PLA, which is essentially a type of plastic, very durable. And printing material comes as what you call filament. They look pretty much like this, where it comes on a spool like this. Now these spools, they come in different colors, usually, and also different sizes. So this size is a thousand grams. And this entire print took about 600 grams to print. So if I wanted to print all of this on one spool, I could maybe almost print two full versions. So this entire print pretty much used half of a single spool. Now, of course, these are different colors. So I printed them from multiple spools, but just to give you an idea of how much material is used to print something like this. Now, on average, these spools are usually cost effective, relatively. They usually cost less than about $30 US. Now, I recorded this process from start to finish, so I had to break this down in two different videos. Video one will deal with steps one and two, which is creating the concept and creating the 3D model. And video two will deal with preparing to print and the actual printing and assembly process. So just a warning, I recorded the full process from start to finish. So each of those videos are going to be like maybe an hour each. So prepare for a long ride. Now, if you do manage to check those videos out, you can leave your comments because in the future, I plan to take on much larger architectural 3D printing projects, maybe like large buildings. I've done a couple before, so let me know what you think. Now, if you want to check out those in-depth videos, you can check them out over here or you can look in the description below.
Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.